I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. There's a home in the bayou calling your name. Looking out over the bayou, bayou, watching the sun come up would just be awesome. A unique piece of property. Wow. I'm excited. Buy in the bayou. All new Saturday at 10. Only on Destination America. A Great Lakes lighthouse and private island transformed from rocky and ragged to sensational and serene. It took three years for this tenacious couple to carve out this beacon of bliss that today shines at two and a half million dollars. Key West, Florida is officially the southernmost point in the continental USA. But the real last stop before Cuba is Ballast Key, a private island eight miles out to sea. When you truly want to get away from it all, this is the place to be. Nothing but swaying palm trees, tropical breezes, and lots and lots of open water. When David Wolkowski first laid eyes on this 26-acre island in 1974, it had nothing but a few shipwreck remains. But David only saw paradise, so he bought the island for $160,000, and he built a home where no house has any business to be. You know, David, he built everything from scratch here. There was nothing here. I think this must be a life project for him. And I think it means a lot to him. People thought David was nuts buying an island. He still remembers his mother's reaction. Well, my mother said, what do you need an island for? David answered that question by creating his own private resort. Today, there's a main house with 4,000 square feet and five bedrooms on the south side of the island and a three-bedroom guest house closer to the beach. Walking paths crisscross the island, and guests have their choice of six beaches. David loves to entertain. His nephew, Timothy Greenfield Sanders, came here a lot growing up. I think my favorite place on Ballast Key is the arriving on the dock. There's something magical about it. David had to build that 550-foot pier just to reach the deep water channel, which is way offshore. The pier cost a whopping $1,000 a foot. That's over half a million bucks just to walk to shore. Everything out here that's man-made had to come from someplace else. David's crew had to build the house in pieces on the mainland, then haul those pieces out to the island and assemble them. To build eight miles into the ocean on an island where you have to bring everything by barge, there's nothing here, it's particularly difficult. And so he had to create a small city. He had to create his own water, his own electricity, his own sewage, and all this. David's friend, Reef Perkins, was part of the construction team that made all this happen. The biggest challenge? Dealing with that 25-minute boat ride out to the island and all the delays caused by high winds and low tides. So I took a load of cement out, which was a little bit too much for the size boat that David had. And as I get just about to the pier, the caretaker was down in the wheelbarrows. Everybody's ready to go, and I went aground. So I sat out there for the change of the tide, which was about seven hours that day. David insisted that the main house capture the spirit of Old Key West, basing its design on the Northwest Passage Lighthouse, a Key West landmark that burned down in 1971. For David, it's all about the ocean views. The first floor bedroom has glass walls on two sides. The second floor includes the kitchen and a living room where David has played host to literary heavyweights like Truman Capote and Tennessee Williams. The crowning touch is up this spiral staircase to the third floor master bedroom. This room has not one, but three balconies, each with an epic view of the sea and sand. Look at that view, I mean, it's incredible. Sleeping here at night in a rainstorm, with lightning going off, it's like you're in a, in a you know, fireworks explosion. It's so fantastic. And, and just hearing the waves lapping on the shore, it's really a, nothing like it. Weather can be a blessing or a curse out here in the Keys. One bad storm can leave you stranded for days at a time. We've been through a few hurricanes. We were hit pretty bad in the last one. So, I mean, it's definitely a challenge. It's something you have to be aware of. So David specifically built this place for self-sustaining survival. For electricity, rooftop solar panels provide most of the juice, with a backup generator just in case. 
To make sure there's always drinking water, a funnel system collects rainwater from the roof and steers it to storage tanks below. And there's a separate desalination system for making seawater drinkable. Guests can kick back in one of the island's five gazebos, wander through the sculpture gardens, or just sit on one of those verandas and drink in the view. You know, to come out here and just to enjoy the peace and do whatever you want to do. I think this is really like one in a kind, and the location is one in a kind, and it really doesn't get any better. So what can you expect to shell out for this exclusive 26-acre retreat? With its screensaver-like views everywhere you turn, this exclusive tropical island could be yours for a breezy $15.8 million. There's nothing in the world like owning your own piece of paradise, where living life on your own terms is the ultimate fantasy. Whether you want to bring a famous architect's dream home to life, restore an old Great Lakes lighthouse, or pilot your own boat inside your...